that we'll discuss very simple setup and very simple experiment uh, you have you must have watched the video have you gone through the video yes sir yes sir yes, yes sir so it, is, it is self explanatory i need not elaborate more so briefly i'll discuss about the setup and the how the experiment is carried out so it is very simple so let us discuss about that someone recording okay okay so let me go to the presentation mode so can you see yes sir so this experiment is uh, the title is you can see determination of thermal conductivity of insulating powder so an insulating powder thermal conductivity is to be determined okay so for this uh, uh, finding out this property thermal conductivity we uh, basically we take the help of heat conduction one d heat conduction and a very simple setup you can see the objective is to determine the thermal conductivity of an insulating powder which is basically asbestos powder okay it is also given now you can see first of all this background theory uh, if we have a uh, hollow sphere uh, basically hollow space made by two spheres so you can see here in this hollow space we put some insulating material like asbestos powder and if we put an electrical heater inside okay so <coughs> if we uh, basically put on power to the electrical heater the temperature will be increasing the outer surface and due to the temperature gradient there will be heat transfer from the inner surface to outer surface through this layer through this layer by heat conduction okay now the thing is that if we apply one dimensional steady state heat transfer in spherical coordinate is very simple this is the equation you can derive this equation easily and i think in your heat transfer course this is covered are you familiar with this this uh, formula yes sir yes sir yes sir yes, yes sir we have it done is this so obvious that i need not repeat this the derivation so you can even if you want to derive you can derive in a in a in 2 3 minutes okay so very simple so if this inner surface temperature is ti and if the outer surface temperature is t0 and inner radius is ri outer radius is r0 uh, you can see 1d heat transfer now 1d steady state heat transfer means all the temperatures are steady it is not changing with time this is the first assumption there is another assumption see for one dimensional steady state heat transfer can anybody tell what is the assumption of this what is the assumption for this formula to be valid sir constant thermal conductivity okay constant sir, internal heat generation is zero hmm heat generation is okay okay fine then there should be symmetry of temperature axis symmetry of the temperature You know the meaning of axis symmetry of the temperature. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? It means if we consider this surface, actually you see in the sphere we have three coordinates: r, theta, phi. R is the radial coordinate. Theta is say this direction. Theta is the this angle. If you if you rotate about this center on this plane, you have theta. And now if you rotate a perpendicular to this plane, we have azimuthal angle phi. Now R is basically varying from R I to R zero. Here, this is the domain, and theta is basically if you take theta, you, theta theta rotation, you will get in the complete rotation, you will get this circle. Now, if you move on the other direction, like the plane to this plane to this slide, if you move in the other direction, you will have the perfect sphere, right? Have you got it? so that is azimuthal angle now the thing is 
if the temperature provided the temperature here temperature on this surface and this surface if this temperature surface temperature is a function of radius only like if i consider theta phi keeping r constant if i get the more or less same temperature similarly here also keeping r constant if i if i move in theta arbitrary theta and phi if we find this temperature more or less constant then we can say that the heat transfer will take place in the radial radial direction only under this situation what happens if we have this heat input to the electrical heater some heat power input like voltage and ampere input giving some very arc control i give a power input it means the power will dissipate entire power will dissipate on the on the on the radial direction only right have you understood yes sir so under this situation you will consider this this is the radial heat transfer only okay will not have a azimuthal component okay. now this is the setup you can see this is the sphere outer portion of the sphere is visible from this okay this uh, in this heater uh, th there is a heater inside and this heater power is given by this heater control uh, unit okay and you can see voltmeter and ammeter uh, from this reading you can estimate the power okay by this variac you can increase the voltage and amperage okay and there are the selector switch and these are the temperature indicator okay so you can see the selector switch for different position 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 like this so changing this switch you can find the temperature of a particular selector point you can see the temperature control unit uh, this selector switch is like this okay now uh, there are a number of thermocouple you can see the leads thermocouple leads here these thermocouples are mounted in the in the inner surface in this surface and in this surface okay so these will give the there 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 are some thermocouples mounted on this surface some thermocouple mounted mounted on these surfaces okay so under steady state what happens if you give some power wait for some time you see the temperature does not change with time you can see that the steady state is arrived now under this situation you can take the reading of temperature of the inner surface and outer surface and you can see the temperature and <coughs> this is the basically the heater panel unit is like here you can see the heater power goes on like this okay and these are the specifications diameter inner diameter 10 cm outer diameter 20 cm this is the sphere diameter means uh, heater is made of nichromoire this spec is here so this variac is basically 2 ampere 230 volt okay insulating powder put is asbestos and the temperature is in uh, in this range okay procedure very simple put on the main switch okay apply input power by operating dimmer state and this should not exceed 40 watt otherwise there will be burn out there may be burn out okay so material may undergo melting okay so you should not exceed this much power in it wait until a steady state condition is reached now how to judge you watch a particular temperature or all the temperatures whether it becomes steady when after some time like you are having a some temperature like 75.1 75.27 so when it is increasing after a certain point it will be more or less constant then the steady state uh, is assumed to be reached okay then note down the readings repeat the experiment for different heat input like you give some power input first wait for steady state take the readings now give a different power input take again the readings okay then after the experiments uh, over you basically put the variac to the zero position this variac is to be put in the zero position so first power will be given uh, then you slowly increase the heater input okay wait for the steady state when steady state you will find this temperature will no more change with time take the reading of the temperatures by the selector switch and uh, after that you change the power input increase the power input to some extent wait for another steady state take the readings okay 
readings means voltage, amperage, and the temperatures. Okay. And then, after experiment is over, you first this variac is to be made zero, then put up the main switch. Okay. You can see T1 to T4. We have four thermocouples mounted in inner surface sphere and six thermocouples mounted uh, in the outer surface. This will be outer surface. Okay. There is a mistake here. This is inner surface is T1 to T4. First is first column is for voltage. Second column is for current. So voltage and current will be you, you will uh, mark here in this table. Then T1 to T4. Four thermocouples are mounted in the inner inner radius inner surface. And uh, six thermocouples T5 to T10. These thermocouples are mounted on the outer surface. Okay. So you can see why outer surface. Number of thermocouples are more, you can judge easily. Why more? Very obvious question. Then more surface area. Yeah, exactly. More surface area. So, to get the... Now, average sur temperature for inner surface, you see Ti is average of this. You get from experimental observation. Then, average surface temperature for outer surface, you get the mean of this six thermocouple data. Heat input is obtained from Q dot is equal to V into I. R0, Ri are given. So, K can be determined by this formula. Okay. So, very simple experiment. And uh, you can see in the result from this data, uh, calculation, you, you do this first T, I, T0, you make the calculation. Heat input, you take the do the calculation, then determine the thermal conductivity. So here average surface temperature, inner surface temperature is this, average outer surface temperature is this, heat input is this, you can determine the thermal conductivity. Now you complete the tables, okay. So all the steps for one run as sample calculation, sample calculation means all these calculations, okay. You show one, one particular case, but complete the table for at least four data, four data. Then you see what is the thermal conductivity variation as a function of Ti. Okay. Here you can see that this thermal conductivity is a strong function of temperature. So you are measuring the thermal conductivity under different temperature condition. So you know you can expect that the mean thermal conductivity will be different for this asbestos. So how this thermal conductivity is changing with temperature? that you can plot and you can see how the variation is there and you can validate this okay whether it is matching with some published result okay you can you can match this with some data okay you can see this one is the 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 sectional view of the setup of this setup so this is the heater mounting position you can see the heater position is this this is the stand over which this uh, sphere is mounted okay and this is the inner sphere hollow shown by the hidden line. And you can see the thermocouple mounting, uh, how these are mounting are the T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, like this. Okay. This is the panel diagram you have seen already. So this panel is shown here. Okay. The same thing. Okay main switch, voltmeter, ammeter, dimer stat, toggle switch, temperature indicator and all this, okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Now you can see the data from which you can see what is the, what we mentioned here, that axisymmetric condition, whether that is maintained. You can see from here, from this data. Okay. So for the first run, one result, this result is taken from a data sheet of a student. Okay, it is taken. Uh, so you can see this voltage and amperage. In our surface temperature, four thermocouples are giving exact reading. Outer surface temperatures are showing exact reading. Okay. So variation is nil. Almost in all cases, you can see in the second run when you are increasing the voltage and current. Okay. Your inner surface temperature, there is no variation. Outer surface temperature also there is no variation along the along the different places. Okay. So you can see that 
uh, even more power, higher power also the trend is same, similar. Inner surface temperature, there is no variation. Outer surface temperature, there is no variation. Although it is expected that when you increase the power, the temperature is basically for a particular location, you see the increase, how it is increasing. And you can see that the increase in the inner surface temperature is more, uh, while in the outer surface, you can see the increase is not that observable. Why? Because outer surface is exposed to the ambient condition. Okay. Outer surface is exposed to the ambient condition, so heat loss is there. Okay. And since the inner surface is, inner surface is basically, in the inner surface, what is happening? See, here it is the mount, it is filled with the insulating powder. It means insulating powder is offering a resistance. So naturally, the inner surface temperature is expected to be more, right? Because this layer is with a very low thermal conductivity material, insulating powder. So as a result, you will have an inner surface temperature is quite high. When you are increasing the power, you can see this, how it is changing, 47, 58, 68, 77. But you observe a typical outer surface temperature, 36, 37, 38, 39. With a power hike from 50 to 80, means almost uh, you can expect that it is, it is 60 or 70 or 80 percent higher power you will find this temperature is 47 to 77 means it is almost that 30 uh, that increase is more than uh, in the same same level same ratio 50 to 80 1.6 times 47 to 77 almost 1.6 times now see the outer surface temperature how it is changing 36 to 39 the ratio is almost one there is no change almost okay have you observed this why this is happening because the outer surface is exposed to the ambient, so heat loss is maximum here, okay. While in the inner surface and between inner surface and outer surface, there is an insulating material, so it is offering a thermal resistance, so heat, heat, loss, heat transfer, it is acting as a resistance, so naturally here, you will get a maximum temperature. You will find this feature in any insulation system. Wherever you will put an insulating system, in the surface you will get the maximum temperature. Have you understood? Yes, sir. So, that's all. Uh, see, if uh, university gets open, uh, we will try to uh, do some experiments over there so that you have a feeling that you uh, see a setup and take the run and uh, do the take the data and uh, uh, run the experiments. Uh, mm, you you will observe the how the experiment is carried out. You yourself will do the experiment and then take the data over there. Okay. Uh, so hopefully we may get some opportunity uh, to do the experiment. Okay. So that's yes, sir, all, we want, all of us want to do it in offline mode. And we are yes. looking forward to do it in uh, the lab itself, hands-on. Yes, yes. If university is open, definitely I will try to get you at least some experiments. Uh, yes, sir. Sure, sir. We, we will try to do that, definitely. Why not? Because experiments, if you do on your own, you will have a feeling no, that you are running some setup, you are doing the experiment, uh, you are running... Uh, uh, and then take the data there, uh, take your own data, because this data I am what I am giving you, if someone has taken the data and you are simply copying that, eh? it's not like that. Of course, you know, right now I am uh, helpless, but uh, if it is open, definitely we will try to uh, get some experiments done. So that's all. If you have any question, you can ask. Uh, this is a very simple experiment. Uh, setup is very simple. Uh, and the uh, run time is also not very high because uh, for steady state to arrive steady state this uh, system has very low thermal inertia since it is having a time constant uh, this low thermal inertia so you can uh, easily steady state is reached and you can see four data at least means within a very uh, sufficiently it can be taken with a, within a specified period of time okay so that's all if you have any question you can ask okay uh, otherwise, will the next class we will continue uh, the next uh, experiment, and uh, <coughs> I will create a Google Classroom for uploading the uh, 
uh, lab sheet or lab data so two experiments you try to uh, complete the whatever you have done say uh, pin pin and this experiment to try to complete the uh, experimental means uh, report you can make the report okay so at the end of the semester i will take all the reports okay but you can prepare okay thank you very much thank you sir okay sir thank, thank you sir. sir okay take care thank you thank sir you. thank you sir thank I, you sir i hope we'll meet you uh, in person in uh, offline mode soon yes or gadi yes sir uh, i hope we'll meet you in offline mode yes yes definitely i will i will i also hope yeah. okay thank you sir uh, take care everybody uh, stay safe thank you thank you sir